Hi. Why do the world's best players have coaches? Players like Roger Federer, Rafael Nadal, or Virat Kohli. Because if you think about it, the coach can't play half as well as the player. Nadal's coach is his uncle Tony. He can't play half as well as Nadal. The coach can't motivate the player either. These players are highly self-motivated. From the age of five or so, they'll be practicing 10 hours a day. And it's not like the coach can add value by sharing their personal experience. So if Stefan Edberg is coaching Roger Federer and he says, you know, this is how you play in Wimbledon in center court, Roger Federer might think, well, I've been there many times myself. The one thing that a player can't do when he or she is playing is observe themselves. So what coaches bring to the table is an external perspective. There are times when we are watching a football match or a cricket match and we can see what the player or the team is missing, not because we are better at it than them, but because we are watching it from the outside. Each one of us is like a box filled with X's. These X's represent our thoughts, feelings, beliefs, values, experiences. And all these X's are consistent with each other. Feedback is like an O. It's an outside perspective that may not match our X's because it's based on other people's experiences, experiences that we may not have had. Now, as humans, we often react to perspectives that challenge our beliefs and values by rejecting them. We can get angry or dismissive or switch off. Now, some of us, if we are calm, might start evaluating the O's to see if they make sense or not. But even that won't help in many cases. Because the only thing we can use to evaluate the O's is our existing belief systems, our X's. So at the end of the day, we'll only take in things we already agree with and we're not really open to new ways of looking at things. A more powerful question sometimes is, what if? What if this were true? Who might see me this way? In which situations might this work? And then just keep the O's in a separate box. And then if you let it lie for a while, maybe it'll create some patterns and possibilities. And if after a while you still don't think the O's are useful to you, just throw them away. Nobody's saying they're the truth, the light, the way. It's just a point of view. But if some of the O's do stick, the size of the box has grown. You've learned something and you've grown. What makes feedback hard to listen to is that we feel like we're being judged. But even if we're being judged, that's not the problem. The problem is that we are judging ourselves. We can only be hurt by feedback because of our own self judgments. If I tell you, you're a purple flying rhinoceros, you're not going to get upset. You just laugh and say, what? Because you know that you're not a purple flying rhinoceros. But if someone is sensitive about their weight and they judge themselves every day in the mirror, if somebody else calls them chubby, it's likely that they feel hurt. Not because of what the other person said to them, but because of what they've been saying to themselves about themselves every day for years. So if you find that some feedback from someone else things Rather than getting angry at them, you need to identify how you've been judging yourself and be gentler with yourself. Now, even if someone is not giving you feedback, but is actually being very abusive and aggressive, you still can get value from that conversation. For example, if someone says, this is the most useless report I've ever read, what are you, stupid? If I'm internally stable, I can translate that statement to, hey, what they're saying is, this report doesn't meet my expectations and I'm very frustrated with you. And then, if I'm non-judgmental with myself, my calm response might be, hey, would you please tell me what's missing in the report? But if I've been judging myself, I could either get angry and respond with, who are you to call me stupid? How am I supposed to deliver the work uh, if you won't give me the resources I need? And the relationship will settle into a very confrontational pattern. Or I could get very defensive and apologetic, and so I might say, hey, I'm so sorry, it's my mistake, I'll fix it. But if you can hear the statements, no matter how insulting or abusive, and you have the internal stability to extract the neutral information from it, you can respond to the situation with a greater level of mastery. If you want to be great in any area of your life, you've got to learn the skill of hearing feedback. Not constructive feedback, not positive feedback, not well-meaning feedback, any kind of feedback, and creating value from it. Here's the reflection exercise for today. Get feedback from the people who are really important to you. Ask your spouse what they think you do well and what you could do better as a spouse. Ask your son or daughter, no matter how old they are, what you do well and what you could do better as a parent. Ask for feedback from your parents, your bosses, your subordinates, colleagues, friends. Get feedback from people who are important to you. And when they give you feedback, don't say, I agree or I disagree. Don't give them excuses or justifications. Don't give them any commitment to change. 
just say, thanks for that. I'm going to think about it. Let it lie for a few days, and then you decide what you want to do with it. Feedback is the breakfast of champions.